Well, obviously, it's the first time in a long while that we've, we've had the winter break and um, we gave the players a week off um, after the, the Dundee game and uh, spent some time with their families. A couple of them, uh, I think, went away and you know had a week in the sun. Um, and then we were back in, um, you know, on the you know, couple of Mondays ago. And, uh, you know, in a perfect world, we'd have liked to have went away and done some more Muller training and played a played a game. Um, you know, last weekend whilst we if we had been abroad whilst we were away, but that you know, we didn't have the the budget for that, so we stayed at home and we worked extremely hard and played a game um, amongst ourselves uh, on the pitch. And then this week's been a normal week. Um so it's been um pretty quiet as you can imagine. Um but the players have worked hard and this week we've got a real focus because obviously we've got a game to look forward to uh, on Saturday. So this week's probably been an easier week to get through. Is the winter break a good thing? I think it is if you look at it overall where the season is getting longer, uh, particularly for the you know the top players as well and internationals are played um, uh, right through into June. Um, there doesn't seem to be much scope to extend the summer break in terms of how the fixing goes and with um, internationals, cups, competitions, uh, Champions League, Europa League. So, um, and so to get a more rest time and a bigger break over a period of twelve months, the winter time seems to be the best time to do it. Uh, we had a managers meeting uh, with. Um, the SPFL last week, um, or sorry, this week at, at, at McDermott, and I think most of the managers were for it. Uh, the same token, most of the managers would like it maybe been a week longer, because the three weeks doesn't really, uh, only really allows you to give the players a week off, because um, you've got to get them back into shape for the, you know, for the for the season starting again. So I think majority would want it to be a little bit longer. At uh, that manager's meeting, what else was, was getting discussed that you can disclose? Well, there's there's nothing really other than that that I disclose. There's just things about the you know the the, the league cup, um, you know st- when it's going to start. Uh, maybe slight one or two maybe adjustments to it. The the, the challenge cup as well, uh, and mostly it's about fixing. Um, Relationship between managers and, 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 and referees. Um, th- there wasn't, you know, and and some of it has to be confirmed. So there's not a lot really more that I can uh, you know, discuss about that. Going into Saturday, what injury concerns have you got, Murray Davidson and Michael? Well, Murray's obviously f- fit in terms of his football fitness, but he had a virus. Danny had a virus as well, but Danny recovered a lot quicker. Uh, Murray's still struggling. Uh, done a bit of light training today but he wouldn't be in any physical shape to, to be involved Michael Coulson um, as I said previously has had a bit of a setback he's probably looking like another three or four weeks Ali Gilchrist who you know has been unfortunate he's had the two operations in his in, in his groins and um, was doing really well but just felt something um, at the end of December thought that would settle down but it hasn't really um, been able to do a, a, an amount of training but not as much as we'd like so he'll go and see a specialist next week again but again that's been disappointing for him because he's had two operations in the last nine months and um, it's something that we need to get to really try and get to the bottom of it. We're hoping that it's maybe just um, scar tissue or something that's really causing his his delay. I say Michael Coulson will be another four weeks and um, other than that, basically, we've, we're pretty fit the full squad to pick from. Um, how excited are you to, to get back to playing football and what are you expecting from the match against Dennis Muir? Well, you know, we're paid to, you know, play football and manage teams and it's it's good to get back. Um, the break's been nice, but it's always good to get back and um, we can look forward to a tough game. Uh, I've watched them last week and we've had them watch them on a couple of occasions, so... The preparation's done, the work's all done, and we look forward to, you know, I've said to the players this morning, 
the beauty about the cup competition, five five wins on, on them certain days and um, you win a trophy, so that's the start of it tomorrow. That's a, how, how far can St Johnston go in the cup? I don't, you know, I think, you know, the obvious, you know, Celtic will be the favourites again, but I think a lot of teams, you know, um, you could probably put 10, 12 teams that probably fancy themselves for good cup runs and <coughs> we'd certainly be one of them. Um, what would you say are the are Stenhouse Muir's biggest strengths from 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 seeing them? Their, their best players, um, you know the the lad Cook and Ferdado and the wings have done pretty well for them. Uh, they have a bit of energy in midfield with uh, the lad Miller and experienced striker and McManaman. But um, you know we'll f- aware of what they can do and we'll prepare for that. And but ultimately, if if we go out and perform the way we can, you know we should win the game There's uh, four, 14 players that are going to be out of the contract in the summer how many of them would you like to keep and do you think are going to are going to stay Well I mean it's a process that uh, takes time which sometimes uh, frustrates people but that's the nature of it it's not like going to a shop and um, handing your money over and getting the product so um, it does take time the process has started with some and some will have to wait. That's the nature of the game. Um, some already can be talking to other clubs, which they may well be doing. Um, but where we are at the minute with the ones that we're talking to in terms of Danny, David, you know, Richard and, and Brian Easton and Joe, um, I'm comfortable where we are with, with all of them and certainly at least two of them, I'm, I'm hoping three possibly, that uh, within the next you know, five, seven days we'll have we'll have uh, definite, you know, everything done and dusted and the contract signed. Um, so it's it's moving along nicely. As I say, it, it, it um, you know, it, it's a question that gets asked at every uh, time I'm, I'm with the media and with the press, and it's the same with every manager. And there's not a lot we can divulge because it's a it's a matter between club and and player, uh, but. Uh, I'm sitting here as manager St Johnson comfortable the way things are going at the minute Stephen McLean's got a one year option on his yeah, contract yeah, Steve, yeah well Stephen's yeah that's an automatic one year so the, the, there'll be no problems with that and with Maka a very a very fit player obviously how many more years do you think Maka has in him at the, at the top level um, you can't tell but he keeps himself in good shape he's a good professional um, and he's certainly got uh, and at least another couple of seasons in him, I, I believe. So, um, again, um, that's something we'll probably look at further down the line. And being the January transfer window, players like Michael Haller and Stevie May are getting speculation around them coming again, loaned out to teams in the, in the top flight. Are there any moves for, for them or any other players? No, I mean, the, Michael is a player that, well, both are players that have done great and have a lot of time for. Um, in Stevie May's case, um, you know, Aberdeen are strongly linked to him. Um, you know, Hearts are possibly linked to him. Dundee, you know, those clubs can all afford to outstrip what we could do financially. Uh, you know, if if Stevie was uh, indicating that this is the place he wanted to come, obviously that would make things easier. But you know, again, it's all speculation that these things are happening. Um, and there's nothing concrete. Michael as well. You know, Rangers have never come out and said he's available for loan yet. Um, but again, if Michael was available, I've spoken to the chairman, and you know, we certainly would be interested if that was the case. Just finally, um, a player that has come back to the club, Craig Thompson, returned from his loan at Peterhead. Yeah. Do you feel he's he's ready to to perform in, in the first team yeah, now well, he's back? I hope so. We're sort of slightly disappointed because Stranraer indicated that they were going to keep him. In, um, three, four weeks ago. And then obviously circumstances change um, and they couldn't keep him. Uh, but we thought he was going to stay out in loan. Again, that's something the loan system maybe has to be looked at for players, particularly young players. You know, Craig's played for us and Stranari because we can't go back out in loan again. But, you know, he'll be in the squad Saturday and he, he, he will because, you know, um, you know, Conor McLaren's gone out in loan and, um, all right, Greg Hurst has come back, but 
you know, there's one young uh, wide player gone out and loan, so he will get opportunities to bend around the squad, and it's up to him if he, if and when he gets on the pitch, that he, that he, uh, you know, makes an impact.